Athletic Stadium, Long Jump Track, South London. Charlie Ferguson, 19, in grubby athletic kit, rocks back and forth on a long jump runway. He looks nervous. Three confident young athletes watch him. Carlton Manning, 20, tall, wiry, angry looking, a close cropped haircut with a zigzag tattoo, gives Charlie the finger and smiles. Frank Kerbishley, 45, buzz cut, a limp, UK athletics tracksuit, sees Charlie sprint and leap into the sand, well short of a red marker, eight metres, 20 centimetres, Olympic qualifying standard. More speed, keep your head up. Charlie walks away, head down and kicks a water bottle. Carlton sprints down the runway and lands close to the Olympic standard. He strikes a pose, Usain Bolt style. Frank smiles sarcastically and shakes his head. Carlton high fives the other athletes while Charlie stands alone, head bowed. A concerned Frank beckons Charlie over. Charlie, hold up. A word. Everything okay at home? <sighs> I get it. You think you're shit. Believe in yourself. Just one jump, that's all it takes. A disconsolate Charlie walks away. Frank stares after him. Road by rundown council estate. Charlie drags heavy grocery bags through the estate. A chauffeur-driven car slows nearby. A window lowers to reveal Mrs. Gonzalez, 45, a sharp-featured, menacing Spanish woman. Charlie nods sheepishly, part fear, part recognition. Charlie, darling, so tall and beautiful, like mama and papa. Get any of those GCSD exam things? What's the plan, hombre? Olympic long jump trials. Nobody around here going to no Olympics. Could use a big guy like you to do a little work for me. Uh, it's not really... Just business. And a certain somebody's papa better wipe the slate clean soon. Adios. Mrs. Gonzalez winds the window up slowly. The car pulls away. What slate? Charlie trudges to the lift, out of order. He takes the staircase and sidesteps what looks like a puddle of urine before he steps on and shatters an empty hypodermic syringe. Council estate, Charlie's flat. Charlie enters quietly. Horse racing is on the TV. Sun streams through worn curtains. The flat screams poverty. Stella, 55, Charlie's mum, stained 90, asleep in a chair, breathes via a mask attached to an oxygen, oxygen cylinder. Arthur, 60, Charlie's dad also asleep, a can of lager tilted in his hand, dressed in 1970s tracksuit and old trainers. Charlie turns off the TV, gently removes the tin from Arthur's hand and throws it in a bin where he spots unopened letters, final notice bills. Charlie's bedroom, next day, shouts wake Charlie. He peers through stained net curtains to see a hooded gang riding around and teasing an old lady. Uh, just one jump, one sudden jump. A state block walkway. Charlie knocks on a front door. A surprised Frank opens it. Behind him, Lottie, nine, in Manchester United kit, plays keepy-uppy with a ball in a messy living room. Frank puts a blocking arm across the door frame. I was wondering if... Meet me at the track tonight at seven. <laughs> Charlie smiles and walks away. He spots Mrs. Gonzalez's car from a walkway. A hoodie on a bike approaches, grabs a small package from the car window and sprints away. Athletic stadium, night. The stadium is closed, but Frank lets Charlie in through a side entrance. Frank lays down a large torch to illuminate the long jump pit. Charlie practices jump after jump. Tough for this. Mm. Now, get your arse in gear and sort that stripe pattern. You're running off 20, should be 21. Put your marker a step back. Charlie keeps more jumps but fails to hit the Olympic qualifying marker. He flops on the floor, exhausted and disappointed, and bangs his hand on the sand. Get some new running shoes. Those look like a dog's chewed them. Same time tomorrow? Bus stop. <sighs> Day. Charlie sits with a kit bag as Lottie in Man United kit does keepy-uppies with a small football. 
Hey, you is a R flat. Mm, your um, your your dad's been helping me. He's good like that. Helps me all the time since Mum died. <laughs> Gonna play for Man U and make loads of money so we can have a week at the seaside with fish and chips. It's gonna take something special like Olympic lottery money to get us out of this shithole. <laughs> him, him and me both. A bus arrives, Lottie hops on. I bet you don't owe loads of money to the Spanish monster lady. You owe money, Senor Frank. Pay up or your face gonna look like the bus. Athletic stadium, changing room, day. Charlie changes into sports kit with the other athletes. Partly dressed, he dashes off to the loo. Carlton glances around as he uses a switchblade to cut a slit in the base of one of Charlie's running shoes. Carlton slopes away sheepishly from Charlie's kit. All right, coach. Frank gives, gives Carlton a long, hard stare. Athletic stadium, long jump track. Minutes later, the athletes line up, ready to jump. Carlton rocks back and forth. Remember, knees high. This ain't no jog to the disco. Carlton beats his chest and roars loudly. He sprints and lands close to the qualification mark. Frank shakes his head. Charlie lines up. He places a small disc on the runway. Come on, just one jump. 21 strides. Charlie sprints. Halfway down the track, the sabotage shoe splits and Charlie staggers into the pit, off balance. Carlton and the other athletes laugh. Frank stares angrily at Carlton, who gives him a gesture with his hands as if to say, what? Living room, night. Charlie enters the flat, holding his torn shoe. Stella is asleep and wheezes loudly while Arthur watches TV with the sound turned down. Got any super glue? That's your mum's department. <laughs> How is she? Knackered, worried, the usual. I um, know about Mrs. Gonzalez. Bollocks. How are you um, planning on paying it back? We was hoping you... A distraught Charlie puts <sighs> his head in his hands. Charlie's bedroom, night. Charlie pumps iron slowly and builds to a frenzy. Local park, day. Charlie does sprint after sprint until he throws up. Athletic stadium, night. Charlie practices his long jump under torchlight with Frank. Why, why are you helping me? Not just about you. Main road, day. Charlie, in training kit, shuffles towards a bus stop. He spots Lottie doing keepy-uppies. Teenagers take selfie videos. Lottie loses control of the ball and runs after it into the road, oblivious to a fast car approaching. Charlie sees the car, drops kit and runs towards Lottie. He screams, but she doesn't hear it. The car is almost upon her. Charlie sprints, his face contorted like he's about to burst. He takes off from the pavement edge and leaps with a roar. Fast cut to several seconds of black. Lottie screams and a car crashes, followed by silence. Charlie's flat, day. Arthur and Stella watch the lunchtime TV news. This old Lottie was safe from death in what locals are calling a miracle. A bystander sent us this. Video phone recording of Charlie's jump. Charlie sprints towards the camera and saves Lottie from the onrushing car. Bystanders applaud and slap him on the back. Frank appears next to a TV reporter. Well, this huge leap was by Olympic long jump hopeful, Charlie Ferguson. Ironically, Lottie's dad is Frank Kerbishley, Charlie's coach. We've asked him to measure how far Charlie jumped. TV reporter hands Frank a giant tape measure. Here you go, Frank. Eight metres, 30 centimetres. You've only bloody done it. Charlie's flat day. Charlie leaves flat and finds a box on the doorstep. Frank, 
face badly bruised, watches on from behind net curtains. Charlie opens the box. A new pair of running shoes. He looks around, bemused. Frank forces a painful smile. Athletic stadium, day. Charlie, an air of confidence, looks up at the stadium. A crowd roars as he walks purposely towards the, the entrance. Just one jump. Fade out. <laughs>